beach friends. Today we're going to be spending a couple of really fun hours on Fort Myers Beach. Now Fort Myers Beach is still recovering from that evil Hurricane Ian, but we're not going to talk too, too much about that. We're really going to be spending our time on the beautiful beach, enjoying all the wonderful things that Fort Myers Beach has to offer us. Now, when I decided to go, it's just at the tail end of Red Tide. This part's pretty, but there's dead stuff everywhere. And it kind of smells. So yeah, I had a couple of challenges at the beach, but it's gonna be okay. This is one of the last Red Tide walks that I'm going to do. The conditions change and so we're not gonna have to worry too much about that but believe me friends today we are gonna find fantastic goodies not all of them are necessarily gonna be ones we're gonna be able to take home it's low tide we're gonna be performing a lot of rescues and if you're ready to see what else is out there for us today let's go to the beach You know, when you've lived through a natural disaster, it's not terribly weird to find a couple of armchairs just kind of hanging out on the beach. But the further, again, the further away we get from the street and the houses and stuff, we can just concentrate on all the cool things that we can find down here on Fort Myers Beach, like this angel wing, very sandy angel wing. And I suspect we'll probably find a couple of those today. Kind of hope I find a couple of these too. Now that is a purple sea urchin test. So that's just kind of the body that's left. All the guts and everything are gone. So yeah, it's uh, pretty much just looking for dead stuff here at the beach. Um, at least dead stuff that we could take home. I'm not gonna take any bodies or anything, but I will be taking those urchins and seashells like this pear whelk. Nice little shell. Gonna need a little bit of cleaning up on some of this stuff. So right, again, there's just seashells and stuff jammed in there. And that is fine. And a little banded tulip with a bonus bubble inside. Okay, awesome, a twofer. And then a nutmeg, and that's a nice looking nutmeg. It's actually bigger than a little banded tulip. It's supposed to be the other way around, but it is what it is. Oh, there's gonna be so many goodies here, like this really nicely colored. All right, I'm gonna be careful. I'm not just gonna kind of flick what's inside in there. I wanna be careful and take them out. I don't wanna break that lovely pear whelk with great color on it. Another banded tulip. Oh dear, but that is a horse conch and that bright orange part, that's the body of the animal. So we are on our way to the water, which is gonna be a little bit longer of a walk because it is negative low tide at 6.46. It, which is a little while ago. Right now it's 7-11 in the morning. And so, oh, look at how gorgeous that shell was, but it is alive. So that is also gonna end up back in the water. That is a crown conch and it is gorgeous, but the animal is not done with its shell. So it will be deposited in the water, which I'm not really sure if I'm helping or harming because we do have red tide here. It's kind of, starting to abate, but you can definitely tell it has been here. That is a lovely calico clam, and that, that's clam, and then the lovely apple murex. Two pretty fantastic shells. Do you see some nice little bits here? So it's not too chunky, some little stuff. <gasps> Please be empty, yes. All right, so that's a crown conch that I can keep. It's not quite as gorgeous as that other one we just put back in the water, but it's a keeper. Yay. And a colorful moon snail. Another member of the moon snail family. There are three shells off the top of my head I can think of. This, the colorful moon snail, the shark eye, and the baby's ear. That is a little spiny jewel box. 
And I know you can't really, it's kind of messy. I know you can't really see what's going on, but that is a little tiny spiny jewel box. And as soon as I can kind of test it, I'll see if that's alive or not. And in that tinted cantharis shell, we have a little tiny hermit crab. Oh, you're so cute. And then I was kind of messing around with the spiny jewel box. And as it turns out, it is alive and well. So we are not going to keep that. We're going to leave that here. So I just kind of tuck it in. Yeah, just, just a little bit. Just tuck it in. All right. So far, I, there's been a lot of great shells. Let's kind of take a minute, slow down. Let's see what all is here. I see lots of bubbles. We have ourselves a dark serif. A lightning whelk. Try to give you guys a chance. I see stuff. Apple murex. And it's funny, there's one and it's going to drive me crazy if I don't pick it up. All right, that was nothing. There it is. <laughs> the pear whelk. And a top. So that's just the top of a pear whelk. What do we got here? A juvenile fighting conch. Another juvenile fighting conch. And look, I just kind of moved the shells a little bit and you can see this little lace murex. Holy smokes, there's lots of stuff here. Whoa, gosh, okay. Now we have a banded tulip. Empty, fantastic. And another apple murex. Wow. What else? Another pear whelk. All right, that murex is a little bit older, but yeah, probably going to go for that. I can't hold it, but wow. And so that is a hinged rose petal talon. So all those little goodies. Yeah, I think it's probably going to be a really fun day here. And this rose petal talon. Awesome. And I'm just kind of messing with you guys. Yes, I do see that alphabet cone there. Normally, honestly, though, I really wouldn't pay attention to it because I know I'm not going to keep it. I know what it is. Normally, I might just kind of keep on shelling, but I want to let you know I did see it. I don't know why I have an affinity for these top snails, but I do. So that is a rather large, nice looking top snail. And one lone chestnut turban. I do not think I'll be finding any operculums today either, but we did get one little chestnut turban. Awesome. And that is another little spiny jewel box. Not quite as spiny as the live one we saw, but pretty cool. Wow. Yep. They'll be purple on the inside. So the juveniles will have a little bit more of that pink color on the outside. I think we're going to find a couple more. So we'll see that. That is a common auger. Ooh, and that's a pretty decent size horse conch. I know it's a little bit chewed up on the aperture, but you know what? Yeah, it's pretty good looking horse conch with my little auger. Oh, hi, critter. It's alive. You can see its little spines moving. So this is a sea urchin, a short spined sea urchin. They like to collect shells as well. That makes them, you know, we, we, we're, we're kindred spirits. We both collect shells. So the urchins will collect shells and kind of cover themselves for protection. They kind of think they're fooling people. They're hiding people. I, I think they're kind of trying to get dressed up myself. But that was a short spined sea urchin. And here's another one of those um, spiny jewel boxes. And it's juvenile. And you can see all that pink. The ju Some of the juvenile shells have a little bit of pink to them. Not this buttercup leucine. We're definitely looking at a yellowish shell. So that is a buttercup leucine. Ooh, oh. Okay, we'll start here. I see more than one. Oh, dang it. All right, I call those like peekaboo shells, and sometimes I'll keep them, sometimes I don't. This is what I wanted to see. Yeah, okay, buddy. This, this critter is alive. So I'm gonna get it back in the water. Hopefully that's the right thing to do. Well, keeping it on the beach, frankly, is definitely not going to do it any favor. So we will be putting the live stuff in the water. 
All right, what do we see? I think that's just a piece. Yeah. That was a lightning walk chunk. Okay, what do we, another one. Alive, yeah. Yup. So this beautiful critter was stranded by the tide. Would it have survived without my help? Probably, but I do get a little bit compulsive about it and I want to leave the critters in the water. <gasps> Hello, you beautiful nutmeg, you. Oh, that is so pretty. So another common nutmeg without a peekaboo little hole in it. Awesome. And a cone. Oh, look, it is clearly meant for someone that has an initial A. So that is a cone. <laughs> It's actually a Florida cone, but that is what that is. That is actually a little unusual because it's a lightning wolf, but it's like white and a little bit yellow. Normally they're more of a creamy and brown, so a very white lightning wolf, kind of interesting. So I have not made it far at all. I mean, I have barely, maybe, I don't know, 100 yards, if that. So there's just so much, so much good stuff here, but I do want to take advantage of the low tide. So I am going to try to kind of move it up the beach and cover a bit of beach, cover a bit, I, even though I like the south end the most. Oh, here's another critter. I do like the south end of Fort Myers Beach the best. So that critter, yep, we'll leave. unfortunately, nice size shell. And it's close enough to the water's edge. I feel okay about that. Oh. Empty. Oh, it's beautiful. Yes. Oh, that's gorgeous. Another really pretty caramel with some good spikes on it. Beautiful Florida fighting conch. That's alive. I can see the body of the animal and the operculum there. So I'm just going to leave it alone. We've seen a couple of those crown conchs today. Ooh, it's going to be a good pear whelk day. I've been finding a bunch of those. Fantastic. Oh, and another critter. Hello, critter. So this little hermit crab, it looks to be a long-wristed hermit crab, is tucked all nice in its little apple murex. Not very active. I'm hopefully it's feeling okay. A little slow, so good luck, my little friend. I am just going to leave you right where I found you. Oh, boy. Okay, so that lightning woke there, that's alive. That that I'm holding, that is another fighting conch. There was so much white on the shell. So that was interesting to me. I just like seeing things that are different. And that was a little bit different. Oh, so pretty. This alive. Yeah, let's just take a little peek. In the beautiful, oh, that would have been awesome. What about this? Empty pear well, yes. That's a really nice looking pear whelk. And here, notice how kind of straight the bottom of the shell is because this one is not straight at all. This one is super bendy. So this is a super bendy pear whelk, almost like spiral at the bottom. So I found that to be really interesting. And then just kind of juxtaposed against the one we just found. So you have bendy on the bottom, straight in the upper right, kind of neat. And then the color of the shell itself, a lot of that yellow and the base color of the shell is probably because the animal expired recently. The shells will be more colorful. Oh, this beach looks great. It's going to be so fun. And there were two other people here. I have something to say about that, but go, I'm just going to go ahead and leave all my comments below. And I was also here picking up garbage and I was able to remove quite a bit of garbage. And we'll, at the very end of the video, I'll just kind of let you know how much of that garbage I was actually able to pick up alive. Yep. So I don't just take seashells. I will also remove garbage. Oh, but I'm definitely taking that seashell. It's empty, beautiful, lightning whelk. Oh, and a sand dollar. A very dead, a very collectible sand dollar. The sand dollars that are alive will have moving little cilia hairs all over it. This one, not so much. This one has expired and is completely safe to collect a sand dollar. Like this, and that is another urchin actually. Sand dollars are very flat urchins and then 
this purple urchin, they can be a little more delicate. So I'm gonna put it in my little delicates container that I keep in my shell bag. As far as a shell bag, just any bag will do, frankly. I do have one that's just kind of mesh. I need to sling it over my shoulder so I can pick up shells like this angel wing with one hand and then film with the other. So I don't really care about my shell bag. I just sling it over my shoulder. It just has to be big enough to make sure I can put all those beautiful shells in it. So another fighting conch and a beautiful angel wing. Okay, next up we have this beautiful turkey wing. I like to check the bottom, see if it's broken. Oh, that's gorgeous. Looks like it might have repaired itself at some point, but really pretty. And speaking of pretty, I think it's time for me to be quiet and you to enjoy a little beach time. And yes, yeah, sometimes when I am doing my beach time shots, I will literally stop, turn around and walk back because I've walked past things. So I'm always kind of keeping an eye on the beach as I'm walking around, even if I'm trying to shoot what's going on right in front of me. Beautiful calico scallop. Hello, beautiful. Oh. Yeah, crazy pear whelk day. Beautiful. So a calico scallop and another pear whelk. Now these little birds, that is called a ruddy turn stone. And they're long distant migrant birds. They actually breed in the Arctic tundra. Okay, but they spend their off seasons in nice areas like this. And they get their name from, they have a little upturned bill and they flip debris on the beach to uncover insects and small crustaceans. Hence the ruddy turnstone. Uh -huh. That is not anything. There's nothing ruddy about that beautiful Florida fighting conch. It's orange, it's pointy, it's awesome. I'm kind of circling this. Yep, apple murex. It's, that is a great looking shell. Nice and frilly, awesome looking apple murex. And that's, oh, that's a bummer. And <laughs> that's red tide cough, but it's not making me leave. I'm still here. I might be coughing just a little bit, but I'm still going. I'm not even turning around. There have been times where I've been out and red tide's been miserable, but today it's, it's okay. It's not so bad. Check this out. Now, first of all, I rarely see purple on the beach. That is so cool. So this is just a Southern quahog, but it's massive. Those are one of the only, and it's really heavy too. Normally I might not keep something like that because it's so heavy. However, that purple, yeah, I couldn't leave it behind. So I did keep that big old giant quahog. And I'm gonna keep this too. That is beautiful. Now that's called periostracum, that kind of layer that's on the outside of the shell, but no, I know how to get that off, no problem. It's going to be beautiful. And that beautiful angel wing did manage to find a couple. And I did also find more of one side than the other. It's not completely uncommon. Wow. Now that one's a little bit bigger. That is uncommon. It is literally uncommon to find the bigger angel wings, the smaller ones, not so much, but I'm finding both sides. I'm finding left sides and right sides. And this kind of made me a little melancholy, to be honest, because this used to be just like a really pretty lush mangrove area and it's been beat up and that's okay it'll come back and I'm kind of, you know, peeking around what's behind me. You can hear construction equipment going and you can see everything got 
it, literally everything on the island got some sort of damage for the most part. Ugh. Yeah, it just, it's not good. But the rebuilding's going on. There is hope and there is seashells. So I am going to come down and enjoy this, this beat up beach with a little bit of red tide because you know why? Because of that. Because of that crown conch. Isn't that gorgeous? I literally would have been happy if that was the only shell I found. That is a gorgeous crown conch. Little bit of shine, beautiful spikes. Oh man, that's pretty. And so that's why I beachcomb. I just love checking out the seashells. That fighting con Look at how dark, rich, and chocolate the color is. Or this one, it's kind of white and dark. That one's alive, I can't keep it. Oh, and that's a bummer because the color is so interesting. All the white on there, really, really different. So I, I might be coughing a little bit. I might be surrounded by debris up on the street, but I'm having myself a fantastic time beachcombing here on Fort Myers Beach. See what I mean? Now this one's got purple and pink. Oh yeah, that is super cool. Another, not just regular cool, a super cool fighting conch. That's awesome. Oh, look at the color on that true tulip. I never find them. I mean, just almost, it's, it's so rare. Isn't that beautiful? So that is a true tulip. And believe it or not, the horse conch is actually a member of the true tulip family. Oh, another crown. Oh, I hope it's empty. Yes. Okay, so those pretty stripes. Oh, that's beautiful. Not quite as spiky as that other one we picked up, but the color is fantastic. Yeah, so fun. And I did mention angel wings, and I did indeed find a few. And again, you'll see that smaller size is kind of on the common side. Um, side. Once they get a little bit bigger, that's kind of unusual. So definitely going to hold on to all of them anyway but I give these bigger ones just another minute because they're much older they've taken a lot longer to build and grow and I'm kind of am I going to let that little chip bother me probably not I'm going to hold on to that beautiful angel wing oh and this shell this shell is so neat because it's really it's like in between being a juvenile and like an adolescent shell so the juveniles they'll have the zigzag like here and then the adolescents kind of move into that coloring. So to have both coloring on the same shell, I thought that was really cool. This is also really cool. It's a sand dollar, a very flat urchin. So sand dollars are members of the urchin family. Ooh. Oh, that's a real nice looking fighting conch. So got ourselves a beautiful flat urchin and a little fighting conch. <laughs> All right, my personal rating of uh, Fort Myers Beach Red Tide right now is like low to moderate, low moderate. All right, in the spirit of keeping things real, I was experiencing just a little bit of red tide, um, like a little bit of coughing. So where I was was down here and I guessed it was low to moderate. And if we kind of look around up here was low in the back bay, it was basically not present. Over here is medium. And then this is where I am. So yeah, I'm experiencing, you know, just a little bit of the coughing. I know it affects other people. It can really be bad for some people. For me, it's not so much. It's, you know, I'm out here, I'm doing my thing. I could have, you know, could have made a different video. I could have came here and talked all about the dead stuff, but I'm just kind of choosing to not. We're just going to concentrate on the more positive things that are literally going on at the same time. So two things can be true at the same time. I can find that beautiful sand dollar and this beautiful broad rib cardita and still cough a little so it is what it is and it is okay because frankly it's gone after this video so this is the last i'm really going to need to speak about it i hope for quite a while but i will be continuing going to the beaches to pick up things like this beautiful yellow prickly cockle i do like a good yellow prickly cockle or just a giant atlantic cockle awesome now that was hinged at one point and it's only got a little bit of its other side there kind of attached, but that is a gorgeous beach bowl. Wonderful. And what did I grab? Oh, 
beautiful shiny lettered olive well looks like it might well, frankly it's wet i don't know if it's shiny fingers crossed it is it's got its point oh a turkey wing another one awesome and frankly i can tell if it's broken or not better from the underside than i can from the top side oh i just like those turkey wings all right so coughing yeah a little bit the shells pretty awesome if you ask me fun factor super up there the grody factor frankly it's there i'm not showing it to you but if you're kind of squeamish this was not the trip for you so i'm just gonna keep focusing on the positive things like that baby's ear woohoo now i did see the uh little sea star so i did get that back in the water but i had to make a beeline for this beautiful baby's ear first awesome thank you fort myers beach you rock and this is just a calico scallop, but it's just discolored in such a way. Isn't that beautiful? Is that just a regular run-of-the-mill calico scallop? <gasps> Hi, sun ray Venus clam that is hinged and awesome. Yeah, that is great looking sun ray Venus clam. Awesome. So I was just walking down the beach, you know, minding my own business. And I look through the mangroves. I'm like, what? And there's this random shell pile. What? And so, I don't know, the winds, the way that the winds and the waves, they just kind of create these weird shell piles. So I'll probably hold on to that lightning well. But isn't that strange? Like it just, and all of a sudden there's this massive shell pile. Kind of looking what's here. Right, for the most part, it looks like stuff that we've already kind of seen today. Arcs and cockles. So I'm just do, you know, doing a quick scan just to make sure my Janoni is not here. That would be terrible to leave that behind. And I'm, I'm not picking up a lot of stuff because I've you know, we've already picked it up at this point. Well, with the exception of this, this little pink coquina. That I had not picked up today, so... doing a scan oh buddy you are sitting right there oh no all right let's get you in the water so the animal has completely like sucked inside its shell to conserve the water that is a little giant atlanta cockle that i'll hold on to but just making sure there's nothing else here and then we're going to go ahead and get that lightning whelk back into the water and hopefully it will survive and so, yep, happily picking up garbage along the way. No, I do not leave sea glass on the beach. That always goes in my beach bag, unless it's a legitimate sea glass. Look at this. Now, I thought it might have been just the actual um, carapace, the, the shell, but it was a live critter. So that's a horseshoe crab. If I had to guess, I'm going to guess female. Its little boxing gloves look like they were on the smaller side. There you go, friend. Hopefully you'll be okay. Another pear whelk, yeah. Oh, wow. And then again, see the base color? See the one on the bottom's a little bit more yellow where the one on top's a little more white. The whiter one was probably hanging around the beach a little bit longer. Oh, yes. Another crown conch. All right, speaking of I'm kind of rolling around the beach, this one definitely has been here for a little while, but... Not like I'm gonna leave it behind, that's for sure. All right, what did I spy? I'm gonna crawl under here for a banded tulip and good thing, cause we got a critter. All right, so we're gonna get that critter into the water. And I saw, oh, I see another banded tulip. Empty, awesome, terrific. Yep, that's a nice keeper of a banded tulip. All right, looks like I'm still here. What else did I see? Oh, another one. Terrific. I saw a little pear walk. I wonder if I'm going to grab it. Fighting conks and let it cockles. Oh, little apple murex. 
I'm going to keep it. Oh, no, I didn't think I was. That's the parawelk. All right, cool. I did see it. Awesome. What? Oh, another little parawelk. Wow, it's a great day for those. I wish I knew why that happened. Some days you just find all the same shell. That's a shark eye. Bunch of great shells. I kind of had to crouch under some trees to find them. Wow. Look at the size of that banded tulip. They only get, a, well, only, they get about four inches long and that's just about the biggest one I've ever seen. That is a massive looking banded tulip. And curiosity did get the better of me. I ran and found that shell, measured it. It's three and a half inches. So it's just half inch short of maximum size banded tulip. <gasps> Another one? Another baby's ear. Awesome. No way. All right, that's super cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <gasps> A golden olive. Now these, all right, you know, this is even weirder than a golden olive because it's like kind of a golden olive. Look, so that's like the lettered olive and then it gets golden and then back to a lettered olive. So it's an anomaly, that color, that like yellow color. Whoa, that is so cool. A half golden olive. Awesome. Oh, is this the same? I think it is literally the same hermit crab we said hi to earlier. Well, I'm glad to see that you're doing okay. Terrific. Yeah, the sound of construction equipment and rebirth and rebuilding. So I leave lovely Fort Myers Beach, but I did take a couple of things like this garbage and I did manage to get a bunch. 3.48 pounds of garbage. Now, previously, I've already picked up 26.52 pounds. Today was 3.48. For a grand total of 30 pounds of garbage, I myself have removed from the beach in about a year. So that, I think, is kind of cool. I have removed a couple things, and I did manage to find a couple of those angel wings. Isn't that nutty? And there's a lot more of the one side than the other. We got some banded tulips that... Uh, sand dollars, some of those urchins, the baby's ears, the rose petal talons, that bendy parewalk, all those other fighting conks, a couple ponderous arcs, the sunray venus clams, a giant lanacockle, and some of the small uh, fighting conks, some of the apple murex, that horse conch, the top snail, the lightning whelks, all those parewalks, the top of a parewalk, a couple of those olives, a little piece of coral, the crown conks are really cool, that true tulip, the shark, uh, I mean, it just was really fun. There was a little bit of everything that was kind of awesome could have gone without the red tide but it is what it is patreons especially my new patreons welcome aboard thank you so much for monetarily supporting me and allowing me to go out i would do this regardless but boy it's nice to be able to kind of afford some gas money and tolls so thank you so very much next week we're going to kais it is awesome. I, I just, trust me, it's going to be super fun. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you again next Sunday.